Good evening, welcome to our Visitor Network TV. You can watch us on Gino TV 99. Dick Herman here, Gino Gang on camera. Chris Perry down there getting uh, some information for today's uh, girls lacrosse game. I'd like to mention all our fine sponsors, Axe Screen and Window Repair, Brock Insurance, Conyon and Coleman Insurance, Cowboys Meat Market, Deli, David Goodman Tiling, Don Allen, Auto Center, Downey Flake Restaurant, Fairgrounds Restaurant, Harbor Feet Oil Corporation, Hingham Savings Bank, Humphrey Electric, The Inquiring Mirror, Island Carpets, Matic at Marine, Island Lumber, Lindsay Incorporated, Island Pharmacy, Killen Real Estate, Island Variety, Cam Appliance, Joe Apaki, CPA, Martin Bork Painting, Nantucket Airline, Pete's Fresh Fish Prints, Nantucket Booster Club, Nantucket Glass and Mirror, T.A. Nelson Construction, Nantucket Civic League, Stover Engineering, Nantucket Electric, The Sea Grill, and Santa Strawberry Stream. We thank all these fine sponsors for bringing you portions of the uh, season. And we're going to take a break and be back with opening face-off. Getting ready for uh, the face-off here. Channel 99, Nantucket, www.viznet.tv. 2014 advertising incentive rates. By three months of advertising, get your fourth month free. and includes four months Discover ads, up to two minutes, broadcasting eight to 12 times a day till October 1st, 2014, and four monthly reminder ads, 15 seconds, broadcasting 12 to 18 times a day till October 1st, 2014. An outstanding deal. Talk to Gino about a total cost, $1,500. Give Gino a call, 508-825-8817. Big game coming up here for the uh, Lady Wheel is Chris. Chris Perry in the booth. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing very well. All excited about today's game and tonight's Bruins game. I see you're wearing your Bruins shirts. Good to see. And here we are in a beautiful, sunny afternoon. I think it's the first time in six and a half years really? that we've been <laughs> actually here, and it's a half-decent day. Cape Cod Academy coming in with a fine record of 14 um, excuse me, they won 14 to 10 earlier over the Whalers, coming in with a, uh, a, a nice record. I'll double check what their thing, I think they're 9 and 4, as I recall, but they're undefeated in the Cape and Island uh, League. And while the Whalers don't have any aspirations of moving on to the state tournament, this is one of those games, or certainly one of several in the next week or so, where they can turn a rather disappointing season record-wise into perhaps some positive momentum moving, moving forward. Yeah, you're right there. The, the, the coach says coach says to the girls today, you know, this is this is your tournament game. Let's go out and, and show Cape Cod that we, that we can play them. And uh, even though they're going on to the tournament, we're not. Let's give them a, a whooping today on our home field. So that's that's the incentive out here today. Yeah, Cape Cod Academy, as I said earlier, coming in the record of 9 of 4 with some wins, uh, some fine wins. They beat Barnstable early in the year, Falmouth Academy, Mashby. Got to keep an eye on a couple of players, uh, specifically number 15, who's a junior, uh, Jojo Edmonds, uh, 35 goal scorer, Nantucket with the ball. Also another junior, number 10, uh, Rebecca Nichols. She comes in with uh, 31 goals and a senior heading off to Holy Cross, number 29. I don't have her name, but um, let me double check that. Actually, she's number 12, Olivia Mead off to Holy Cross with 29 goals. So three players with uh, roughly 30 and higher between them. There's 90 goals on the field just between those three players. That's an amazing amount of goals. Here she is, one of the players we were just talking about earlier, number 12, the, uh, the senior off to Holy Cross. Uh, quite a few underclassmen, so unfortunately for the Whalers, they're going to be seeing these players for a year or two to come. And one of the things that struck me... Um, that was an impressive bit of information is that th some of these schools that these are girls are going off to, Holy Cross, Northwestern, Northeastern, Delaware, terrific schools for these young student athletes. Well, again, Cape Cod Academy, a private school, and they score right at the bat. Private school, they can go out and get the, get the, uh, the, the girls to uh, go there who uh, excel not only on the uh, classroom but on the field here and, that, and that's what you're seeing as you talk about these girls heading off to those great cars. Yep, and that goal, that first goal by Cape Cod Academy on a beautiful sunny day is brought to us by Don Allen Ford, new and used vehicles on sale at Don Allen Ford. Remember the you drive for the Fords going on this uh, Saturday. Stop by Don Allen Ford and uh, sign a form and uh, drive a vehicle if you want. Uh, just have your vehicles inspected. They're going to do a uh, quick inspection. $20 goes to the Boost Club just for signing a form and then another $10 goes to the Boost Club if, if they walk around your vehicle and tell you what might be needed. So Don Allen Ford helping out the Boost Club here and the athletes of Nantucket High School. For the Whalers, um, obviously an important game, but I think it's important uh, individually. Good save in there. 
individually for some of the stronger players to see where they really stand. You know, you see somebody, let's say, like Olivia Slade, who's been dominating, at least scoring goals in it, on her position. But now she's going against equal, if maybe even slightly better talent. So let's see where she stands as she looks at her sort of position statewide as a player. Obviously, Olivia, one of the stronger ones uh, for the Whalers. It got dodged right there, face dodged by number 10, and a backhand shot just wide. Whalers coming in, as Ali said, uh, with a record of four and everything else. Would love to see a couple of W's here this week. Hopefully get some weather to cooperate. The, uh, the thing Nantucket's got to do is uh, get the ball away from uh, Cape Cod. The, the, the strong suit is not defense, and it's showing already early in this game. Their strong suit is getting the ball and running upfield and scoring themselves. There That's the way they're going to beat them, you know, a 10 to 9 game type situation. Yeah, there's a good job by uh, Hannah Kelsey who came in and helped. It looks like they've gone to that sort of low scoop shot two or three times. An individual looking team so far in the first few minutes. A lot of one-on-one -on -one moves, not much sort of cutting into the goal. Number 12 again, one of their stronger players. Off to Holy Cross next year. Olivia Mead. Scored by Olivia again, is that correct? Yes, Almost you're right. on cue, her second of the afternoon, Dick. And unfortunately, we have to go... Uh, say that they're looking strong in the first few minutes they, they that are, yeah. to us by. They're keeping the ball away from the whalers and that's going to hurt Nantucket. Nantucket will not uh, stand up in this game very well if they can't, you know, win the face off, get on offense and score a goal to a seven. They're not going to stop Cape Cod from scoring, but they uh, they got to score some themselves. It's right like, now they're not winning any face offs. Yeah, it's kind of like the Patriots of old, you know, okay, I'm good for 35 points today. If you can score 42, you'll beat us. <laughs> but if you think that we're going to hold the Patriots to 21 and win, you know, it's not going to happen. The Whalers now on defensive half again. Uh, 20 minutes to go, 21 minutes to go. But, but at least in football, when the other team scores, they kick off to you and you get the ball. <laughs> kind of like a face-off here, I guess. But uh, beautiful day. I'd like to see some uh, scoring for the Whalers. Whalers in front of a large crowd. There's 11 people in the stands, so it's nice to see the fans coming out and supporting the Lady Whalers. Right down front, Tia moving down, looking for someone to help. Got a break to the ball, loose ball, scooped up by Cape Cod. Seems we've been calling number 12's name quite a bit. Olivia Mead, Holy Cross bound senior, fast break. Good look inside, shot, oh, score. Goodness. I think that was a dangerous shot. Let's see the call. Calling it off. I is that the, if it was, if that was the call, unless it was an offside or something, that's the most ridiculous call in, in women's sports where they shoot and score and it's called a dangerous shot. <laughs> it, because it hurt the back of the net. You can't hurt the back of the net. <laughs> well, we'll get Gino's thoughts on that later I on. I would agree with that. <laughs> if the shot, you know, took a person's, you know, took their eye out or something, or that's a dangerous shot. But here's a shot that went in the upper left corner. She picked the spot nicely. And it's called back. Great cut. Ooh. Olivia trying to get the ground ball, scrapping in there. She had it for a moment, but yep. didn't pick it up. Whoever wins the ground ball battle wins the game nine times out of ten in Cape Cod. Not only ahead in the ground ball battle, but also a quick two-zip lead. 20 minutes to go. Cape Cod has the ball behind number 13, who had assist, who had a goal taken away earlier. A lot of individual moves here, if you notice, Dick. Not a whole lot of cutting. It seems like the coaches said, listen, you can take these guys one-on-one, -on -one, so do it. See, no cutting, just looking for an individual mood, move. And if yeah, that's they're, just, the, they're just sort of sitting there waiting, waiting to go. Shot, the score. Yeah. Number 10 on the, excuse me, number 19 on the goal uh, for the whale, excuse me, for Cape Cod Academy. That's uh, Becca White. She gets her first of the afternoon, the third for Cape Cod, and that goal brought to us by? Goal brought to us by Albert G. Brock Insurance. Wants to wish each and every student the best school year. Brock Insurance here to provide you all your insurance needs. Give them a call, 228-0104. We have a timeout on the field. Take a short break and be back with first half action. Okay, the timeout's over here, but it's been all Cape Cod Academy. It's so far in the first half, holding a 3 to nothing lead, 19, and 41, 19 minutes, 41 seconds to go, Chris. And uh, timeout well, there, but I mean, what can the coach say, you know? Well, I, I, I hate to think uh, that this game is over because there's a lot to left. But, you know, I see a very dispirited Nantucket team right now. I, 
when you're coming in with the only only four wins and a lot of losses, it's kind of hard to get fired up, even though it's a beautiful day. If I'm the coach, I think you got to try to change it up, and that would I, I'd go to a bit of a zone defense because if they're just going to be a one-on-one -on -one team, then force them into into defensive traffic. Don't fall into the trap of playing them one-on-one -on -one outside, like basketball. You know, if they're yeah, going to the one-on-one's not working, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I play a little bit of a zone, you know, helping defense as opposed to really playing these these girls one-on-one -on -one because early indications are they're just a step quicker and, and a half a step better skill-wise, and it's three zip, you know, five, six, seven minutes into the game. Yeah, Tucker's got the ball, finally. Here's their first uh, rush. Let's see if they can get it over midfield, uh, and they do. Yeah, you need a goal. Now look at Freed is wide open. Take it to the goal. Take it to the goal. She will. That a girl. Now shoot. Uh, you know, at least oh. there's an offensive thrust there. Good move there. Freed shot, uh, I think, deflected off the goal stick. Now that's Nantucket a bad got what they wanted out of that, and they still have the ball. That's a bad pass, but it's also a bad job by Tia, who sat and waited for the ball to come to her. You got to move to the ball. Don't stand and wait for it to come to you. Move to the ball. Good look inside, over Freed's head. Should be goalie ball, but yeah, it should be goalie ball. Need a good ride here, coach. Beautiful day. Finally got some nice weather yep. here. I'm working today until 6:58. At 6:59, my Arse will be on the couch with the remote control. Watch Watching it. the Brooklyn game? Go no. Bruins. Bruins. <laughs> Go Bruins. Do you, know the, do you know the big basketball really nut here? I am. I'm just, I love Garnett and Pierce, man. We got to root them on, too. Well, you, you just turn it on with two minutes to go in the game, and then you'll see what there happens. Now, that's good hustle. There's a little bit of spunk in there for Nantucket, number 12 for the Whalers. Francie Stedman, a little spunk chasing the girl down. Good job. Nice D, good job in there by Thayer, helping out. See, right now I'd let her stay. I wouldn't force her behind. I'd let her go behind and play a bit of a zone defense. Look at that pass. Sound Jeez, asleep. I know. Sound asleep. Yeah, Nantucket's got to step up the defense here for sure. No reason to chase behind the net right now. You know, I just get everybody just get a deep breath and steady it up a little. Whalers back on their heels. This girl, number 20, keeps coming, keeps coming. Passes out to number 24. Katie Bailey, again, one-on-one, -on -one. looks like she's got some help, that's good. Now there's a girl sloughing off to help. That's a good job done by number 11 for Nantucket, Maya Kodalak. Can't fall asleep. One of the rules is to keep one eye on your man and one eye on the ball, Dick. And I see a few whalers have their back and their heads turned and not looking at the ball. Well, see, that happens sometimes when you're playing man to man. You're looking for your man and you're not looking at the ball. Yeah. And that gets you in trouble. You got to keep one eye on your man and one eye on the ball. Now there's good double help. That's good. Stay with her. Good job in there by 12. Is that number 12 or is it 18? It is number 12. That's twice. Nicely done by Francie Stedman. Stay on her. Good wow, help. She was wide. She could have shot that. Oh, there we go. There we go. I think that's Maya Kodalak right here. Good job. Well, that was some good help there. You know, they even though Cape Cod Academy had the ball for a second or two down there, shot. Oh, Olivia. Yes. That was a good look by Maya, and I'm going to give an assist and uh, on the goal, Olivia Slade. So we're going to give Maya the assist. Nice, nice pass by Maya. She she did a dodge. She turned around. She seen Olivia. And we're going to give Olivia Slade the goal. Okay. That's all right with you. And that Nantucket goal was brought to us by? Island Variety. Variety is just not the spice of life. Gifts, accessories, party favors, yarns, craft items, cards of all occasions. Island Variety. Whalers coming up woefully short in the, in the face-off department. I think they won the first one. And after that, it's been four or five for the Whalers. I mean, for uh, Cape Cod Academy. Nantucket. Now, that's a good move by Freed coming back to the ball. Good pass and a good move by Freed. She's got it. She's not afraid of showing some offensive skills. Loves to go right hand. It hasn't developed her left hand much this year, which is going to be a problem as she moves Look ahead. Look at that pass Good wide luck. open. And yes! All right, Freed gets the assist. That's the way you do it. You talk about falling asleep. Yep, Freed with the assist and number 11, I believe, on the goal. Would you 11 say? had the goal. Wow, i never seen anybody so wide open. 
a big major breakdown and the Whalers took advantage of it. Big goal brought to us by Nantucket Island Pharmacies. We'll get you covered in town and out of town. In town, 45 Main Street. Out of town, 122 Pleasant Street. Both pharmacies offer you prescriptions, nutrition, beauty products, health aid, qualified, knowledgeable staffs. Nantucket Island Pharmacies. All of a sudden, it's a ball game here, Gino. It is. You know, they've right... <laughs> Yeah, we got ourselves a game. This is fun. Now. Yeah, they righted the ship a little bit. Notice they got the face off, too. You know, a little momentum ship. Olivia Slade with the ball. I'm sure they've done their scouting and told, listen, don't let 19 beat us. That's a good look, but not a great pass. Boy, the dirt. This field really. Can, can I say it or should I just say it stinks? Can I go stronger than that, go Gino strong. and family? It go sucks. Strong. This field sucks. And I'm on the field all the time refing. There's huge pivots and potholes. That's how you get sprained ankles. But at least, the, at least this field is uh, lined correctly, other than that, that turf field that they took seven years in building and it shows up lined oh, wrong. Good score, 16. 16 for uh, a senior heading off to Northwestern, Kim Keating. That's her first of the afternoon. Kim Keating, a strong player, if you notice, just a lit, little bit of an overpowering presence on the field for Cape Cod Academy, and that goal is brought to us by? The Nantucket Airlines, we're all about the islands. Call now for reservations, 228-6234. And remember, you talked about the Bruins. You can check out the Bruins and the Red Sox at Pudley's Pub, 15 HDTV, Pudley's Pub, go Bruins, Pudley's. Face off Cape Cod so Academy, good. JoJo yes. Edmonds with the ball, right down the gut, right down the pipe, shot, and a boot save. Fine save. That's a good save. This is one area the Whalers have traditionally been really weak at, and that's the goalie outlet pass. Players standing around, really not moving to help. And that's sort of the cheap way out. But, you know, give it Olivia and everybody get the heck out of the way. But that traditionally, even going back even as far as uh, Dale Wayne's daughter, I forget her name off the top of my head, but for years, you know, she went on down to go to UVA. They just never have strong outlet passes. Ooh. Almost connected with Freed there. The ball almost went on net, too. It should be goalie's ball, and it is. It should be on the baseline, on the end line, not there. That was a bad call by John. John Brunel from Paxton. These two officials, both from the Wista area, they come out together once a year to enjoy Nantucket, and they certainly picked a great afternoon to do it. It's a long trip to do a game, long huh? Long trip. You know, did one of the did I get paid by the miles? Well, actually, I was about to say, down in Florida, when I riffed down in Florida at, at the collegiate level, you get a flat fee per game, and then you get so much for every county that you go through, not town, but if you go through two counties, three counties, you get X amount of dollars per county. <laughs> so uh, I was down the um, down the Florida area, and uh, you get some strong money, a couple hundred dollars per game plus county. Well, if you, if you do the games, if you do the games from Western Mass on Nantucket, you should get paid by how many yeah. fish you pass yeah. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> how many bluefish swim by you? A very subtle thing by Lizzie Thayer there, but she had the ball in her left hand, and she switched to her right hand. Let's see how she does here. She's in her right hand right now. She's still right-handed. Let's see if she switches at all. Just one of the subtle things that the viewers at home can look at when the players have the ball. Do they shift from their right to their left? Are they predominantly a right-handed player? Because a good coach is going to pick that up and have their defensive players overplay a particular way. So here's Lizzie Fair, right-handed shot. Take the shot, Lizzie. She, looked, oh, she just should have ripped it. She wanted to pass it. Yeah, looking for... Uh, you gotta take that shot when you're that close. Absolutely, though. looking for uh, Megan Fails off to the side. Stoppage in play here, but Nantucket's gonna benefit from it. Good Again. start by Maya Kodalak today. Maya's gotta take this shot now. A tough angle. I would look for Freed in front. There she is. Uh, good play by the goalie. Goalie and anticipated that. Yeah, and a weak outlet, but it turns out nicely. 15, scooting up JoJo Edmonds. Looking to the middle, good call on a bounce pass. A little bit more than halfway through, Cape Cod Academy with a 4-2 to two lead. And Tucket came alive, yeah, making it a game, but they got to get on back on the offense. 
Well, let's see if they stick to their selfish sort of approach here of just one-on-one -on -one shot, goal. Oh, yeah. Well, number 13 on the goal and number 20 on the assist. 13 uh, for the visitors is Mona, I'm going to say Yusuf, I apologize, and 10 on the assist. Uh, that goal brought to us by? The Seagro. All the locals go for great fish and excellent seafood. The Seagrill, check them out on the net, www.theseagrill.com. For reservations or takeout, 325-5700. Well, the one thing the Whalers have done is kept their big goal scores off the board. The junior, number 15, who's got 35 goals. Another junior, number 10, who's got 31. And the only s senior player of the league. Look at that pass. Wow. Two goals for uh, number 12, Olivia Mead. But the other goal scorers are from, you know, bit players. Olivia Slade with the ball. Oh, horrendous. Yeah. Turned the ball right over. Threw it right into traffic. You right, can't do that. Oh, that's like giving the puck up in your end. And she's going to capitalize here. One-on-one. Yep. -on -one, hit oh, the it's pipe. Post. Now, why isn't that a dangerous shot? You know, the other one was a goal. and was called back. That one was in the same height-wise. Hit the pipe. Goalie's best friend. Well, why is the goals that the the, the uh, nets that high if you can't shoot them right? High? Right, <laughs> they should be like you know waist high. Move to those the little, ball. Those little ones that the uh, kindergarten Jews there, three Worship. by four. Whalers got a wide open player down the middle, number forty three. Oh, oh, there she is. Freed loves. That was a good save off her chest, right up her shoulder. Yeah, forced it in there, but she had to take it. She had two people on her and almost snuck it by the shoulder. I'm going to ask Gino. There was a guy that played for the Detroit Pistons. They called him um, the microwave. Do you remember him? He was a guard. And he was like Adrian Dan Dumars. It wasn't Dumars. It was, he was bald. And he was like Adrian Dantley, instant offense. They called him the microwave. I remember that nickname, he, uh, yeah. I remember he, that uh, nickname. And he was a guard. They'd bring him, he was like a sixth or seventh man. They'd bring him in. Ooh. Uh, not Johnson. Um, but that's who Freed reminds me of. She's like instant offense. She's not going to give you anything on the defensive half of the field. But you get her the ball around the goal, eight times out of ten, she's going to crank a good shot and score. Oh, they, so that's the trivia question of the day, uh, Gino. Who was the Detroit Piston player whose nickname was the Microwave? We'll get, Gino, we'll get Gino to uh, Google that here. Uh, you know, the iPhone is an amazing tool. He, he's he's going to Google that in a few minutes, and he'll have an answer for us. I'm going to give you another trivia question today, and I'm going to uh, there's an there's an a prize for if you can come up with the answer. You, you got to know you got to know some of these answers yourself now. I Chris. know the answer. <laughs> And if you um, <laughs> listeners call up Gino and with the right answer before the end of the telecast, you can get dinner for two at the Sea Grill. <laughs> dinner for two at the Sea Grill. On you. On me. Get a call before the end of the game. In in a in a, in a toaster. We have a few toasters left. The microwave <laughs> number eleven for the Whalers right out out front. Maya Kodalak has oh. had a good game. All right, I'll, get, I'll lead into the trivia question. Number, I think he's number 23. I will double check that. But 23 for Cape Cod Academy, a lovely lady by the name of Olivia Rand. She is going to the University of Delaware. Now their nickname or mascot is the Mud Hens. And the trivia question is this. The Mud Hens is the only one of these in all of Division I sport. The mascot is the only one in the NCAA Division I sports, and they are the Mud Hens. And that's all I'll say, and if you get the right answer, you can go to the Sea Grill for two on me. The Mud Hen. I thought they were the Blue Hens. Blue Hens, Mud Hens, they sometimes... <laughs> They all look alike yeah, to me. Wow. They are, they are, to, to be right, I was thinking of Toledo mud hens, but you are correct. They are the blue hens. And I'll Do I win a dinner? dinner? Mike, is that the answer to the question? Nope. <laughs> oh, I answered it right, Gino. He doesn't no, the, the Delaware dinner. blue hens are the only Division I mascot for this reason. Uh, Whaler's back on defense. There's a female. She's a female mascot. 
Oh, another Is that your answer? That's my answer. 20 just scored. You are 100% correct. <laughs> You are the you're the only one who's ever answered that getting question. Dinner, I'm getting a dinner. Dinner for two. You and me are going to the sea grill. I can't believe you got that answer, Dick. Nobody has ever given me the right answer on that. That is, it's the only female mascot in Division One sport. And that well, I think I figure a, a blue, hen, blue hen. She wants her hair fixed just right. A blue hen, you know. Boy. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I can't believe you got that. Now I gotta reach back and find me a C note for dinner. <laughs> All right, let's go to let Let's, let's go, go to lunch. double or nothing. Double or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to lunch. I'll give you an easy one. What is the official national sport of Canada? Oh, that's too easy. Lacrosse. That is correct. There's two dinners. <laughs> nice save in there for I used to, uh, Cape Cod. I used, to win, I used to win beers at bars back in the uh, 1800s? The, the 50s, yeah, the 50s with that one. Because nobody, nobody in Boston even knew lacrosse was a sport. 6-2 Cape Cod Academy, six minutes to go. Whalers had a little spurt and they had to crawl back into the game, 3-2, to 4-2. to two. Cape Cod Academy took it back to pump in a few. Whalers not out of this game, sort of tightened the ship a little bit. Tia with the ball in front, gave it away. Sam Fried would love to get it because you know she's going to bury it. Bit of a scrap, Cape Cod Academy against three whalers. Looks like they, she has it, and she does. Good stick check. Refs are letting them play here today. John Brunel and John Loftus, both from the Worcester area. And just as I say that, he blows the whistle. <laughs> Joe Apaki, small firm, big difference. Helping self-employed people on Nantucket with their taxes for over 15 years. Give Joe a call, 228-9090. Whalers have a little bit more spunk in the game. I, I, I'd like to think that uh, two people in particular, Maya Kodalak gave him a little kick, and Francie Stedman you know, had a nice spurt in there in the defensive half of the field. Whalers looking to play some tight defense, shot Ooh. another post down low, right about shin high. Does not count as a shot on net. I don't like that stat. What's the, what's the logic behind that stat? Because it's the same stat in hockey. Yeah, if a shot is taken, it's on net. It has, to go, it has the ability to go into the net. In this case, it did not, so it's not considered a shot on the net. It brings up an interesting debate, though, but it technically wasn't, didn't have a chance of going in. There's a nice pass and a goal. Yes. That's the way you do it. Gee, who scored that one? Wow. That, she's the microwave. Uh, freed with the goal, and there was an assist on that one. I think the assist was going to be 18 on the assist, but Freed with the goal, that is her um, first of the afternoon. She has an assist from an earlier play, and that goal brought to us by... Santos Rubbish Removal. We clean up the islands. Go Santos. Remember, you can read about this game and all the games uh, for the Wheelers in the Inquirer Mirror, Nantucket's newspaper since 1821. For Nantucket's news, information, and sports, the Inquirer and Mirror covers it all. And we talked about uh, the girls lacrosse team uh, just playing for pride here today, Chris, but all uh, the other three uh, sports teams uh, are tournament bound. Softball's already in, they got a 9 and 5 record. Boys baseball is uh, already in, they got a 9 and 6 record. I mean, uh, boys lacrosse is 9 and 6, they're one game away. And the baseball is 8 and 3, they're one game There's away. One. Oh! Olivia with a nice shot down low. She got hit and looks like she's. Sort of gave up on the play. Good shot down low. I tell you, when you get to the collegiate level, you never see that type of shot. The girls just bury them. Um, ball was in tight. Olivia looks like she's limping a little bit. Way back on the defensive half of the field. Um, looks like they moved her up to the offensive position. Now, do you follow the uh, collegiate men's oh, yeah. Uh, lacrosse? All the yeah. Well, uh, that was a major upset, right? Brian over Syracuse? Oh, huge. That, that, that's a statement. That's probably Bryant's biggest win in the history of their program. You know, I was looking at the scores. I'm seeing Bryant beating Syracuse, and, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm saying, what, what sport is this in? Is it tennis, no. or what is it? Number 20 for uh, Cape Cod Academy coming around. That's Amelia Way. She found her way to the net. <laughs> that was just too easy, but I couldn't let it go. And that goal brought to us by? Island Lumber, one Popus Road, go wheels. Rain or shine, all Island Lumber is already on time. Remember, you're watching this on Visitor Network TV, Nantucket's uh, Geno TV 99. Check it out. Streaming 24 7 on smartphones, tablets, and TV. Check it out, www.viznet.tv. 
Um, do you remember uh, there was a, a guy that played for Nantucket? He was a goalie, uh, Jamie um, McCoy. Yeah, Jamie McCoy. He went to Bryant. He was their starting goalie for a couple years. Yeah, that's a big win. I wasn't even sure that they were a Division I school, you know? Vinny Johnson. Vinny Johnson. That's I knew he was the microwave. Microwave. You remember him there, Gino? Sort of. He was kind of a short, he was short, he was a stocky guy. He wasn't like the yeah, svelte no, like player like Isaiah Thomas. And he would just come in, they'd give him the ball. He was good for 20 points a game. And I tell you, there wasn't a shot he didn't like. He'd hoist it from anywhere. Did you notice how Gino got us distracted, then he took out his iPhone? I, that was a good move. Sleight of hands. <laughs> Whalers trailing 7-3, I believe. Two minutes to go in the first half. They kind of crawled back into it. Freed got a goal to make it 6-3, but unfortunately, oh, great save. Oh, that was. That was a good save. Best save of the day. Oh, now another one he's gonna Scoop have. shot. Oh, oh. That's the third or fourth time they've gone to that scoop shot. Number 20 again. She found the way. She did because her name is Amelia Way, her second of the afternoon. Dick, and that goal brought to us by? Matic Marine, boats, motors, accessory, storage, and service. If your boat's in storage, it's time to get it out. Matic Marine can do that for you. <coughs> Over uh, 35 years in the business, maticmarine.com. Check them out for all your boating needs. Harbor Fuel Oil Corporation. Over 40 years of dependable service. Peace of mind, Harbor Fuel. Now, is that... Uh, S T U R I D G E Sturridge, is that how that? Sturridge. 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 Get some. Get. We get plenty of sturridge for you. <laughs> we have plenty of sturridge. Don't make fun of Dick's accent now. He's. Cape Cod Academy. Spoke this way. I've spoke this way my whole life. It's, I've been practicing this for 71 years, Chris. I'm not going to change 71 tonight. 71 years. <laughs> wow, that's a good look. Shot. That's a nice heck save. of a save. That's about her fourth 10 bell save of the afternoon. I believe that's Blake. Isn't that Blake Lazarus in the Nets? Yes. Freshman, which is nice to see. Brings back memories of getting some of these goalies in the program for two or three years. Whalers have had a history of good goaltending. Not great. Uh, Look at that. That's guy. that scoop shot again. Wow. You know, sticks up high, you scoop down low. That's uh, Rebecca Nichols. That's her first of the afternoon. Cape Cod Academy putting a little spurt on here. They before. must they must practice that scoop out on a regular basis. Yeah. That has to be a deal. Yeah, you fake up high and then scoop they're, down they're low. All, and they're all doing it, and they're doing it well. That, uh, That's the ninth goal of the afternoon, Dick, and that goal brought to us by? Congan and Coleman Insurance, specializing in personal commercial lines of insurance, auto home marine business, uh, established 1931. Congan and Coleman down at 57 Main Street. Face off here, right front. Whalers going right to left on the radio dial, scrapping away. Cape Cod Academy number 13's got some great height. Monica Yusuf, who has a goal earlier in the afternoon, has got the ball wheeling and dealing. Again, a lot of singleton. No blood, no foul. Good cut, number 12. Score. No dangerous shot there, but whizzed by her head. Olivia Mead, her third of the afternoon. She does have the hat trick. Not the Gordie Howe hat trick, but a hat trick. The tenth goal brought to us by the Sea Grill, Nantucket's distinctive seafood restaurants for all seasons. The freshest seafood prepared your way, and uh, I'll be heading over to the Sea Grill shortly here, Gino. Will you? Uh, he's, got, he's got a free <laughs> dinner for my free dinner. I'm, I'm still because I knew I, I knew the the uh, the blue hen was a female. What what guy would be a blue hen? That's logical, isn't it? <laughs> I'm really well, stunned. Don't give away your tricks. <laughs> Dick, I have to say, I am suitably impressed with that answer. You didn't, it, you came up with it right away. Your first, stunned. All right, the wheels are stunned right now, Chris, as, yeah. uh, as uh, Cape Cod Academy is just running away with this here, already in uh, double digits, and we have about 30 seconds to go in a half time. It'd be nice if Wills could just get the ball down here and put some pressure on it. You keep Cape Cod off the uh, offensive end. Yeah, I, I think they just, I, I, I think they came over. They got a couple quick ones. Whaler sort of right the ship. And then superior talent just took over. Right before half, a shot wide. And I, I just think you see a team that's just a step quicker, uh, a year or two better athletically in lacrosse, and, and just unfortunately for the Whalers, a slightly better team. 
We'll be, take a break and be back with second half action.